Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor Anthony Menzel, and we are transmitting our Sunday service for this week from Abundant Love Church in northern New Jersey. And this is a, our Veterans Day service as well here in the United States. On November 11th, we celebrate Veterans Day. So it's a special, extra special service because every time you get in the presence of the Lord is a special time. We're going to start off this extra special time, hallelujah, in prayer. Father God, we just pray right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We pray right now, Father God, that you would remove every obstacle, hindrance, and distraction and impediment to this service in Jesus Christ's name, that you would be with us in a special way in this service, Father. Daku dika, daku, daku, daku. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. For covering all of the details that we don't know with our understanding, with your tongues. Daku dika, daku, daku, daku. We pray that everybody, hallelujah, participating in this service will leave from this service better than what they came in. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I praise you, Holy Spirit, for that touch, hallelujah, that you just gave me to confirm that it is done in Jesus Christ's name. Now, Father God, we praise you and we thank you, hallelujah, for this opportunity to intercede we often have, every service we try and intercede, hallelujah, but being that it's Veterans Day here in the United States, we're going to start with intercession, Father God. Please always bless our prayers to be guided by your Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Bless our prayers to be guided by your Holy Spirit. Guide our prayers, Father God. Guide our prayers. Hallelujah. And make them permanent before your throne. That if something happens where we can't pray the prayer that we've been lifting up to you anymore, whether you take us home, Lord God, or something happens where we can't pray the prayer anymore, that it would stay before your throne. Hallelujah, 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 and be answered by you, Father God, because we don't come before you, hallelujah, just asking for earthly material blessings, Lord God. The main blessing that we're asking for, Lord God, is for souls, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. And we're asking, Lord God, and crying out to you, Lord God, that COVID-19 would be replaced with spiritual awakening. That will last at least until the rapture so that the maximum number of souls would be saved now and always, Father God. Hallelujah. That is the center of our prayers, Lord God. That you would take people out of the path to hell and put them on the path to heaven, Lord God. We can't do it, Lord God. Separated from you, we can do nothing, it says in John 15, 5. Oh, hallelujah. But you can do it, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Use us, Lord. Show us, Lord, what to do. Oh, gashoshisha mahorna mani hashonda. Oh, gashoshisha mahorna mani hashonda. We praise you and we thank you for it, Father God. Hallelujah. 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 On this Veterans Day, Lord, we lift up our veterans, Father God. We lift up their families, Father God. We pray that you would cover each and every one of them with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That as many of them as possible within your will and the maximum joy possible will go to heaven. Hallelujah. That you would bless them all to leave this earth with Jesus Christ, Father God the maximum number possible. Hallelujah. Within your will and the maximum joy possible, Lord God. We praise you for our veterans, Lord God. We praise you for the people who have sacrificed their part of their lives, Lord God, to defend our country, Lord God, here in the United States and 
Each country, hallelujah. The military people deserve respect, hallelujah. When it's defending a nation that tries to do the right thing, Father God. I, I know that there's some nations that are dictatorships, Lord God. But I praise you, Father. That is defending their nation. Hallelujah. Praise you for every soldier defending their nation or every person who has tried to defend their nation. Hallelujah. 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 In the right ways, Father God. We pray especially for the veterans in the United States today, Father God. And we pray that you would supply all their need and all the need of their loved ones according to your riches and glory. According to Philippians 4.19, Father God. Father God, we pray right now, hallelujah, that you are covered with the precious blood of Jesus Christ and spirit, soul, and body. Oh, hallelujah. All those participating in these intercessions, Father God, you know that the enemy doesn't like it when we intercede. You know that he doesn't like it when we try to advance your kingdom. So protect us, Father God. Keep us and our loved ones and all of our descendants under the precious blood of Jesus Christ, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you and we thank you for it, Father. In Jesus Christ's name. Oh, gashoshishamahoranamanihashonda. Oh, gashoshishamahoranamanihashonda. We pray, Father God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We pray especially now as well, Father God, for Abundant Love Christian Church, Lord God, for all of the people who participate in our church, Father God. We pray, shall we thank you, cover us and our loved ones and our descendants, with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You know that cold season is upon us, Father God. You know that cold season is upon us. Rebuke all sickness, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. Rebuke all, rebuke all sickness, Father God. In Jesus Christ's name, that we might advance your mighty kingdom, Father God. Father God, we pray for our prayer basket, Father God. Hallelujah. Soon our Thanksgiving will be celebrated in the United States, Father God. Soon it will be celebrated, Lord God. And we ask you for all those petitions in the prayer basket, that they will be answered in the best way possible, Lord God. That we would have many testimonies on Thanksgiving, Father God. We praise you and we thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father God, we pray. For the maximum blessing possible over all ministries, Lord God including Abundant Love, and over Presbyterian Church that's opened their doors for us to rent from them for our in-person services, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah. Compassion International and World Vision that helps so many poor children around the world, Father God. Oh, bless these ministries now and always, Father God, as much as possible, Father God, in every way. Bless Blue Mountain Christian Retreat, that helps so many people be refreshed in your presence and in your word. Daku dika daku daku daku. 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 Bless the voice of the martyrs that helps the persecuted, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. Bless Arrow Academy, the Christian school my daughter attends, Father God. Bless Abundant Life Church in Whippany that sponsors that Christian school, Father God, 
and Abundant Life Church in New Brunswick, where I went in college, Father God. Bless every ministry, Lord God, especially those, hallelujah, 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 that are trying, Lord God, to serve you according to your Bible, according to your full gospel, Father God. We praise you and we thank you, Father God. In Jesus Christ's name. Now, if uh, Reverend Mary, if you could come and lift up um, the um, the names of the people, hallelujah, individuals, please include Sister Bonnie that I went to see her yesterday. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then I will lift up the nations. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, in the name of Jesus, I want to lift all of these people. But I want to start with the veterans. I know Anthony already mentioned the veterans, Lord. Bless those guys. They give their life for this to keep this country free. My husband was a better than in Vietnam, and he jumped out of 13 planes. He was a paratrooper, and I thank God that he's still alive. He's a purple heart, Lord, and he was doing everything he could to defend this nation. So God bless him and protect him from every situation he's going to face, Lord Jesus. Today we have a fabulous uh, ceremony for the veterans, and I bless this, this reunion that we're going to have, Lord, that you be there, that you be the best, that you be the most important invite in this situation, Lord, that every, every veteran that's going to be in this reunion will be blessed by you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Also, Lord, bless Anthony, Maria, me personally, my sister, Marisol, Carmine, Valerie, Gerd, Parker, Hunter, Jace, Nicole, Judy, Marcy, Davis, and Rusty, Lori, Candace, Wendy, Mark Rivera, Jamie, Agnes, Anita, and family, Mr. Hassan, and President Zelensky, Lord, that you will fight those battles for him. Give the victory to the Ukraine, Lord. There's a lot of people right now that probably have no food. And I claim in faith that you're going to bless them tremendously to win that war. And can, Lord Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus, I claim in faith that you take over the service. And that it's not Anthony giving the word, but it's you, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for this day. In your precious name I claim it. Amen and hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Lord Jesus. We take stand and intercession. Father God, I pray for those. I praise you for those prayers for Ukraine. You see the colors of my tie, Lord God. There's my shirt. They're the colors of Ukraine. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We praise you, Father God, for a free and democratic Ukraine, at least until the rapture, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. Father God, we're crying out to you as well for Moldova that's been um, threatened by Russia. Oh, free and democratic Moldova, at least until the rapture, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We cry out to you for a free and democratic Taiwan, Father God, at least until the rapture, Father God. I praise you just like David defeated Goliath, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Taiwan and you is a majority. I praise you, Father God, and I thank you for a free and democratic Israel, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. At least until the rapture, Father God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we praise you. We thank you, Father God, for a free and democratic South Korea and Japan. You know, they've been threatened by North Korea. We praise you for a free and democratic South Korea and Japan. 
at least until the rapture, Father God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And Father God, we pray on this Veterans Day service, Father God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. For a free and democratic and strong United States. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. At least until the rapture, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, Father. We thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you and we thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name. Oh, gosh, you see some of the money has shown that. Oh, gosh, you see some of the money has shown that. Oh, gosh, you see some of the money has shown that. Oh, gosh, you see some of the money has shown that. Father God, you know that these elections we just had in the United States were very disappointing to me in many ways, Lord God. You know that the, every abortion um, thing that was on the ballot, Lord God, every question about abortion on the ballot went in favor of people who like abortion, who are in favor of abortion instead of who are pro-life and against abortion, against murdering babies, Lord God. So you know the United States, the majority of the people right now, they favor having the choice to kill babies, Lord God. And you know, Lord God, that that's very disappointing to me, Lord God. But Father God, you can move in power and you can change things, Father God. And we plus Jesus Christ are still a majority. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Change things, Father God, so that we won't be destroyed from within. Change things, Father God, so we won't be destroyed from without. Father God, you know I live in a town where they want to indoctrinate the children, Lord God. The majority of the parents voted to indoctrinate their children that all kinds of wickedness is okay, Lord God. Whether that be gay marriage, Lord God, whether that be transgender issues, Lord God. They voted to have the little kids be indoctrinated, Father God. And Father God, but I praise you and I thank you for my daughter's Christian school. And I praise you and I thank you I can send her to a place where they won't do that to her. And I praise you and I thank you, Father God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I praise you and I thank you, Father God. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. I praise you and I thank you that we still are a majority in this community. Because Jesus Christ plus one person is a majority. And there's more than one person that's worshiping you in Randolph, Father God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you and we thank you for that, Father God. We praise you for protecting the United States, not only from without, but also from within. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's so many things that are not right, Father God. But we praise you and we thank you for protecting us. Hallelujah. From within and without, Father God. And for blessing there to be a strong, democratic, and free United States, at least until the rapture. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, I praise you and I thank you. That when I was a little boy, hallelujah, Germany, East Germany was communist, Lord God. East Germany, where many of my relatives live, my extended family was communist, Lord God. And then, hallelujah, Ronald Reagan, you used him to say to the people, tear down the wall. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And just like we said, he said, tear down the wall, and the wall came down, and Germany was reunited, Father God. We say today, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're crying out to you today for a spirit-filled, hallelujah, democratic and free. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Afghanistan. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Syria. Iraq. 
Daku dika, daku, daku, daku. Iran, kasu si shambahur na maniha sonda. 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 Russia, daku dika, daku, daku, daku. China, kasu si shambahur na maniha sonda. 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 North Korea. Daku dika daku 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 dika daku 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 dika daku daku daku. Father God, we ask you in the spirit, tear down the wall. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah! In Jesus Christ's name, and we pray for all the nations of origin of the people that participate in abundant love services. The same thing, free, democratic, spirit filled. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah! From now until at least until the rapture, Father God, for your glory, Lord God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When our sister Gabriella is going to come and help us. Amen. Okay, clean that up and come and help us. Praise the Lord. Pastor Shisha Mahur Ramani Hashona, Reverend Mary wants to come up. Hallelujah. We're happy today to be in the house of the Lord and we're here to celebrate Jesus Christ on Veterans Day and every day. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Been battling some colds. But Jesus Christ is worthy anyway. Amen. So we're going to start off with It's another day, Johnny and I. So glad about it. So glad about it. So glad about it. It's another day, Johnny and I. So glad about it. I'm so glad to be here. Well, I got the Lord Jesus and I So glad about it So glad about it So glad about it Well, I got the Lord Jesus and I So glad about it I'm so glad to be here Well, I got the Holy Spirit and I So glad about it so glad about it. So glad about it. Well, I got the Holy Spirit and I. So glad about it. I'm so glad to be here. Well, I got the Holy Bible and I. So glad about it. So glad about it. So glad about it. I got the Holy Bible and I'm so glad about it. I'm so glad to be here. Well, I got my family and friends and I'm so glad about it. So glad about it. So glad about it. Well, I got my family and friends and I'm so glad about it. Well, I got leg to walk with and I So glad about it So glad about it So glad about well, it Well, I got leg to walk with and I So glad about it I'm so glad to be here Well, I got a mouth to praise with and I So glad about it so glad about it. So glad about it. Well, I got a mouth to praise with and I. So glad about it. I'm so glad to be here. Well, I got food to eat and I. So glad about it. So glad about it. So glad about it. So glad about it. 
Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. In the name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Tell me, tell me, who can stand before us when we call on God's great name? Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. One more time, tell me, tell me, who can for us when we call on God's great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Gabriella. Take a vow. Hallelujah. She's been battling illness. Hallelujah. And she's still helping out with the service. Well, this last song of our praise and worship, Hallelujah, is a prayer for the United States. Amen. On this Veterans Day service. Hallelujah. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber wave of grain, for purple mountain majesty above the fruited plain. Thy gold refined. 
success, be nobleness and every gain divine. Oh, beautiful for patriot dreams that cease beyond the years. Thine alabaster city gleam undimmed by human tears. America, America, God shed His grace. And crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shine. We just pray, Father God, that America, the United States, will bless you the way we need to, so you can bless us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, the way you want to, Father. And we praise you and we thank you for your blessing over this nation and over the nations of everybody participating in this service, Father God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Father God, I pray for this message. Oh, God. I pray, Father God. Hallelujah. 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 I pray for this message, Father God. That you would speak through me now. Oh, hallelujah. And that we would receive everything that you have for us today, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. I praise you for the children, Lord God. I praise you for the youth, Lord God. I praise you for Sister Gabriela, Lord God, yes, and for being Lord. here to support the service even when she doesn't feel so well in her body. We praise you. It's not COVID. Hallelujah. But you know she's battling the cold. And we praise you, Father God, that by Jesus' stripes she's healed. Amen. And we praise you that she was able to praise you anyway and give an example that even when your voice cracks, you praise God anyway. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We praise you and we thank you for the children. Please cover them, Lord God, with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Father God, they say that this next generation is more liberal, Lord God. But we pray, Father God, you would take control of this next generation, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. You take control of our youth, Father God. Take control, Father God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That the youth... Hallelujah will become on fire for you, Father. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. For now until the rapture, Father God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. The, the maximum number of souls will be saved, Father God. Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Protect them from all hurt, harm, and danger in the spirit, soul, and body. Cover them with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. The United States and around the world, including Anaili and Nigeria, our sponsored children, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Sister Gabriela, you can stay or you can go, whatever you would like to do. You've been so good today. Hallelujah. So, have Christ's dreams for your life. 
Have Christ's dreams for your life. A couple things have happened lately. One is, um, in one of the services, this question came up in my spirit. In life, the main question or issue is not what is going to make me happy. The question is what does the Lord Jesus want you to do? What does the Lord Jesus want you to do? And I connected it this week with the elections. I was very, very disappointed. And I'm not here to talk politics, but in terms of issues, I was extremely disappointed because there were at least five issues related to abortion on the ballot in different states. And even in the most conservative, socially conservative states, these measures went in favor of people who are in favor of abortion instead of against the abortions and in favor of life and in favor of what Jesus Christ wants. And you know, even though Roe versus Wade in our country, which legalized abortion federally all over the country, has been overturned, we cannot forget that for 50 years, people were conditioned that it was okay to kill babies in the womb. And now it's just the churches are finally, some of the churches are waking up. I praise God for the Catholic Church, and a lot of evangelicals speak badly of the Catholic Church, but the fact of the matter is a lot of the evangelical churches have been asleep when it comes to social uh, justice, and the biggest issue of social justice is abortion. Because there's been more babies killed in the womb since 1972 with Roe versus Wade, I think it was 1972, um, than in, I think, World War II. Like 60 million babies aborted. So no matter what kind of issue you're talking about, you know, the focus on prosperity instead of on the babies being killed in the womb. And a lot of evangelical churches will talk about name it and claim it and you know, having a big house and having a promotion and God blessing your finances and all of these wonderful things. But the social justice, the blood that is on our nation, that has been this crying out from the ground of our nation, just like Abel's blood cried out from the ground, the blood of those babies cries out from the ground. The, a lot of the evangelical churches have ignored. And I know that because I went to a full gospel church for 14 years and like once or twice it was mentioned, the issue was mentioned. Everything was healing and miracles and prosperity, but nothing about God's ability to change our society and really bring a societal change where we turn back to him. Because God can only bless America the way he wants to, for example, if America blesses God the way we need to. Hallelujah. So I was very disappointed about that. I was very disappointed about the school board elections in my town, which really have nothing to do with politics in terms of a party, right? Neither one of those issues really have anything to do with it. It's not like, oh, this was the Democratic Party uh, candidates on a school board. No, these were just different people who had different views, and all of the most liberal people were the ones who got into the school board. Which shows me that the people in my town, the majority, not everybody, but the majority, that's what they want. They want our children to learn that it is okay from a young age, it's okay to have families where you have gay marriage and you have, you know, you pick whatever gender you are instead of following what the Bible says that God creates you either male or female. And, you know, a whole bunch of stuff that they want to put in the curriculum in New Jersey that's just very, very bad. Uh, and get bad because it's not not with the Bible. I was very, very disappointed. And so, what are some of the things that can come to your mind? Well, maybe I should move. Right? Maybe I should go to another country that's more conservative. Maybe I should go to another state that's more conservative. But it's not about what will make you happy. It's about what does Jesus Christ want you to do? Hallelujah. And one of the things I've learned, I've learned over the years, is that when you let something go, to get it back is very hard or impossible. 
I left a church, for example. I've been there, that church, I was there for 14 years. And the connections that I left, I, that were cut when I left, I realized recently that those connections are gone. That those people, you know, the church, the church shut down with COVID, and basically COVID was a, a main, major factor in shutting the church down, some other things as well, but that really knocked that church out. And I'm thinking, well, maybe I could help them to continue under another name or under our, under our, our, under our church. But the connections were gone. So when you think about, oh, let me go and do this or do that or make some drastic decision, realize that whatever you lose when you do that, you may never get it back again. One thing the Lord has shown me, for example, with the church, abundant love, because sometimes you, as a, as a pastor of a, our church is small in person, we have a lot of people who watch the services online, but in person we're, we're small. And I, you know, sometimes you get discouraged, and you're like, "Lord, what are you, what are you having me do?" You know, I'm working a secular job to support my family, and I'm doing the church, and it's a lot. And God has revealed to me there are blessings that you will lose. There are blessings you will never have if you let this ministry go. And when I see, for example, my little daughter singing here, when I see my mother participating in the services, when I see my family together worshiping the Lord, that's a blessing. And maybe if this ministry shuts down, maybe we won't have that anymore. So have Christ dreams for your life. Following the crowd will not, let, will not get you to heaven. Following the crowd will not get you to heaven. Matthew 7, 13 and 14 says, Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life and there are few who find it. So if you think you're going to follow the crowd and get to heaven, you're not. We talked about recently that getting to heaven, right, you can be like the ten virgins. They're all virgins. They're all trying to follow the Lord. Hallelujah. They're all sanctifying themselves, setting themselves apart for the use of the Lord. But five of them went to heaven because they were full. They had their, their oil, their lamps full of oil, which represents being close to the Lord, being filled with his presence, being reading his word. Get, how do you how get close to the Lord? Reading his word, applying what it says, praying. Amen? And then you got the five foolish virgins whose lamps weren't full. And when the Lord came, right, and he said, okay, right, they, they had to go and get oil. They had to go and start praying. They had to go and start, you know, reading the word. It was too late. Not everybody talking about heaven is going there. When you look in the, in the Bible about the rapture of the church, there's seven types of Christians described in Revelation 2 and 3. Seven types of church, seven churches, or seven types of Christians, seven types of churches. Only two are going with the Lord in the rapture. Which means the other five out of seven types of Christians, if you're going to go to heaven, you have to refuse to get the mark of the beast if you're alive when the rapture, when the tribulation comes. You have to refuse to get the mark of the beast and you're going to have to get your head chopped off, according to Revelation 24. Hallelujah. So, you know, following the crowd will not get you to heaven. Going after what's going to make you happy is not going to get you to heaven. Following the world system won't get you God's blessings. The devil can give you money. We talked about that in a recent service. Matthew chapter 4, verse 8. The devil showed Jesus Christ after he was, he was fasting and he was being tempted by the devil in the wilderness. Hungry. And the devil showed him the, the, all the kingdoms of the world. And he said, if you worship me, I'll give you all of this. Why? Because when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, the authority God gave them over the creation, where, did, where they transferred it to the devil. So the devil can make you rich. 1 Timothy 6, this, this passage we mentioned the other day. 1 Timothy 6, 
Now, godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. You should not base your life on what job is going to make me the most money. You should base your life on what job does Jesus Christ want me to take? Where does Jesus Christ want me to go? Right? Me, my own example, I could have been a principal of a school or an administrator making twice what I'm making. But I can't do that and have that level of responsibility and be senior pastor of a church. It's an impossibility. So you have to make a decision. I could be very, very happy in terms of material things. Oh, I can buy more things. I can maybe go more places with my family. But what does the Lord Jesus want you to do? That's the question in life. And that will bring you to the greatest satisfaction. Hallelujah. So we talk about that. It's like with the big lottery, it was like almost $2 billion. And, you know, when you get your ticket and you see, oh, I didn't win. I didn't win anything. It's disappointing. Especially if you had, were, you know, thinking about how you could bless people with the winnings and all kinds of things like that. I'm not a gambler. I don't believe in gambling. But if they got a big lottery, I'll buy one ticket. Because I figured, you know what? One ticket is not going to, $2 is not going to... Uh, uh, make me or break me or be make me irresponsible with my finances. What's bad is when you start buying hundreds and thousands of dollars of tickets. That's that's gambling and that's a sin because you're not a good steward of your money. But one ticket is not going is not being irresponsible. So of course you're disappointed. But you know what? I didn't have all that money the night before. And what's the best blessing you can have? It's not money. It's Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's Jesus Christ in your life. In Jesus Christ's presence is fullness of joy. Psalm 1611. In God's presence is fullness of joy. Money doesn't give you fullness of joy. There's a lot of really rich people that are miserable. Hallelujah. Even people who have committed suicide. I remember Robin Williams, this comedian, multimillionaire. Can make everybody laugh. He was so depressed that he killed himself. So, Matthew chapter 6, also want to mention this passage. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Hallelujah. Are you not of more value than they? This is why passages like this teach me that, you know, yes, I, I want to be kind to animals. I don't want to hurt anybody. But if I have to choose between helping hungry children and helping animals that are in need, I'm going to help hungry children. Or if I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and, and uh, protect Babies in the womb versus, you know, people, some people, they're real, oh, let's save the whales, but they don't care if you kill your baby in the womb, right? That doesn't make any sense. We're, we are of much more greater value to God than the animals. And it says here, verse 28, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon and all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you O you of little faith? Oh hallelujah! Oh hallelujah! hallelujah. Verse 31, therefore do not worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for after all these things the Gentiles seek. People who are not with God because the Gentiles Yes, it's people who are not of Jewish heritage, and I'm not a Gentile. I might have a little bit of Jewish heritage from my, my Spanish side, 
But in general, right, people who are not Jewish are considered Gentiles. But in the, in the spiritual sense, a Gentile is somebody who is not following God. For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God. Oh, hallelujah. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Oh, God. I feel the presence of the Spirit of God. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Hallelujah. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So how do we go? I have five, five points. Five points I felt from the Lord about having how to have Christ's dreams for your life. Number one. Number one, don't give up. This is very important. Don't give up. Take full advantage of the opportunities that God gives you to advance Christ's kingdom. This is very, very important. Take full advantage of the opportunities that God gives you to advance Christ's kingdom. John 9, 4. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. We have to appreciate every opportunity we have to advance Christ's kingdom. Because, you know what? There's going to be people that, if let's say if I go home and be with the Lord, I get discouraged and I say, I don't want to be here anymore. Guess what? There's going to be people, if I just give up, that might not go to heaven because I just gave up. Right? I've seen, for example, in the ministry, I saw a case of a parent who kind of just gave up, died of cancer, and then the son totally left the way of the Lord. So you have to make sure, amen, that you are taking full opportunity, full advantage of the opportunities that, uh, that God gives you to advance Christ's kingdom. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. This is very important, right? Because sometimes people get discouraged, and when you get discouraged, you're focused on yourself. You're not focused on helping somebody else. Now, thanks be to God, oh, hallelujah, who always leads us in triumph in Christ. So maybe you lost the battle. Maybe in these elections, you know, God's people lost some battles. Hallelujah. But you know what? It says, and we are always leads us in triumph of Christ. We're going to win the war. Oh, hallelujah. And through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. God is using you to bring his knowledge of him everywhere you go if you're trying to live right for Jesus Christ. So don't count that a small thing. When you give up, you count that a small thing. You are not appreciating the blessing of being used by God. It says, verse 15, For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved. We are the fragrance of Christ. We're bringing a sweet-smelling aroma to people. And if you're not there to do that because you've given up, amen, something is missing. It's like last week when Gabriela was absent from our Spanish language service, right? Something was missing. She was battling sickness. We weren't sure if it was COVID or what it was. It was a fever. So she had to stay home. Amen? But one thing is when you're battling illness. Another thing is when you've just given up. you checked out. Verse, and it says, and among those who are perishing... Verse 16, to one, the one we are the aroma of death leading to death, and to the other the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? We, we are not as, as so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. You're bringing God's word. You're bringing God's testimony. You're bringing God's light to other people if you're following the Lord Jesus. Another very important passage is 2 Kings 13. It's very important. Because you know what? 
when the, when the end of your life comes, when God cuts your life off, there's no more that you can do for people. That's why I pray that our prayers will be permanent. Because if something happens, you know, I went to see somebody that in, in a nursing home yesterday, and it was very, very um, poignant. It's very difficult. Because I knew this person when their mind was right. The person was somebody who was a professional person and helped a lot of people and would pray and read the Bible. And now their mind is gone. And I was praying God. That the, the person did receive prayer. So I was praying God to, you know, restore for restoration. But it's very, very, you know, nostalgic. And when that happens... We can't pray like we used to. If we get to that point, whether it be death or whether it be your mind is gone or not where it used to be, you may not be able to pray like you used to be able to pray. You may not be able to do things the way you used to do them. The night is coming when no one can work. Your works end. So I pray for permanent prayers. That our prayers will be permanent. They stay forever before the throne of God. I pray stuff that you know what, God? Permanent, uh, a strong, free, democratic United States from now until the rapture. And that be permanently before your throne. So the day that I'm not here to pray that anymore, for whatever reason, that prayer is still going up to you. And you still honor that prayer. You still hear that prayer. 2 Kings 13. Elisha had become sick with the illness of which he would die. This is 2 Kings 13, verse 14. So we see here, we know, by Jesus Christ's stripes, we are healed. Verse Peter 2, 24. And normally, it is God's will to heal us. However, each and every one of us, if the rapture doesn't come first, when, when the Lord's going to take up, you know, the, the, the uh, faithful followers of Jesus Christ to heaven without dying, until that event happens in the middle of the Great Tribulation, right, we all have to die, pretty much. The only two people recorded in the Bible who didn't die was Enoch, who walked very close to God, and God just took him, and Elijah, who was taken up in a chariot of fire. But everybody else, including Elisha, who had a double portion of the anointing of Elijah, and Elijah was taken up in a chariot of fire, Elisha even had to die. So, there is sickness that is unto death, and in that point, you know, God isn't going to heal because the person is, you know, preparing for death. But in general, it's God's will to heal. I say that because sometimes people get discouraged when they pray for somebody and the person dies. Um, you know, in those cases, God can still move in power, bringing relief, during the illness that leads to death. Amen? But that's an aside. But it's an important point. But Elisha had become sick with the illness of which he would die. Then Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. Look at this passage. Elisha is dying. And he's still being used by God. He hasn't given up, even in the midst of the sickness of which he was going to die. That's the kind of people that God has called us to be. Valiant soldiers that are fighting until the, the day of our death. Not giving up, not speaking negative, not saying, I'm done, I'm praying for the end of the world. No, that we are fighting to the end. And Elisha said to him, take a bow and some arrows. Elijah should let himself be used by God to pray and intercede. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it. And Elisha put his hand on the king's hands. And he said, open the east window. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria for you must strike the Syrians at Aphek till you have destroyed them. Then he said, take the arrows. Elisha's doing a, 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 um, something symbolic. He's doing intercession through symbolism here. He's praying through symbolism. Then he said, take the arrows. So he took them. The king took them. King 
King Joash. All right, this is Joash, yes. And he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. We can't stop. We have to take full advantage of the opportunities God gives you. Don't stop. Only stop when Jesus tells you to stop. Hallelujah. And listen, the man of God, Elisha, who is dying, was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you destroyed it. But now you will strike Syria only three times. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So number one, number one, take full advantage of the opportunities that God gives you to advance Christ's kingdom. Full advantage. And I don't care what situation you're in, how old you are, what condition your body is in. Elisha was dying and he let himself be used by God. If all you can do is sit in your house and pray, pray. Ask God, God, show me how you want, what you want me to do. I may be 85 years old, but show me what you want me to do to be used by you. Second point about having Christ's dreams for your life. Let the Lord direct you through his word. Let the Lord Jesus direct you through his word. Hallelujah. God will speak to you through his word. And, you know, one of the scriptures that has encouraged me in the ministry is John. I believe it's chapter 20. I have a very close relationship with the Lord Jesus for the glory of God. And, no, it's John chapter 21. John chapter 21. And, you know, I love to spend time telling the Lord Jesus how I love him and, and send him hugs and kisses and he touches me and it's wonderful. But you know what the Lord tells me in John 21? John 21, 15. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? This is after Peter was had denied the Lord Jesus on, you know, the night he was arrested. And Jesus is restoring him. He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, feed my lambs. He's telling him to take care of the people of God. So what did God tell me? Take care of my people. Whatever people I send to you, take care of my people. Hallelujah. God will speak to you through his word. Psalm 119, 104 says, Through your precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This Bible is not just in a book of, of stories or historical facts. This is a guide for us. And it is living, right? At Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and powerful, living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and of joints and marrow and is a, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, living and powerful. It will transform you. And whatever we do has to be in agreement with God's word. I cannot leave the ministry unless God tells me to because he told me, feed my sheep. You love me so much? Feed my sheep. Hallelujah. So if God gives you a passage, like he gave to Reverend Mary, not to worry, then don't worry. Hallelujah. Third point about having Christ's dreams for your life. You should pray until you have God's peace. You should pray until you have God's peace. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33 this talks about how church services should be conducted, but the, the um, principle behind this verse is true in general. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, 
as in all the churches of the saints. God is not the author of confusion. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, this applies to marriage, for example. It says, verse 12, but to the rest I, not the Lord. But this, this is in the Bible, so God is speaking to us through the Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul who wrote this passage, because he, even though he says, I, not the Lord, but I, he's, the Holy Spirit is speaking through him, right? We know that the Bible was, is inspired by the Holy Spirit, so the people who wrote it were inspired by the Holy Spirit, so it's the Holy Spirit speaking to us. But to the rest, I, not the Lord, say, if any brother has a wife who does not believe, and she is willing to live with him, let him not divorce her. And a woman who has a husband who does not believe, if he is willing to live with her, let her not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. Verse 15, but if the unbeliever departs, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. The marriage can be dissolved. There's two reasons in the Bible why the marriage can be dissolved. One, infidelity, and two, abandonment by an unbeliever. So, the, the um, brother or sister is not under bondage in, su in such cases, but God has called us to peace. Hallelujah. For how do you know, O oh wife, whether you will save your husband, and or how do you know, O oh husband, whether you will save your wife? So we have here, you should pray until you have God's peace. If you don't have God's peace about something, don't act. We go to 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 7. It says, As for Saul, he was still in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. Then he waited seven days according to the time set by Samuel. So he's supposed to wait for Samuel to do this offering. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. Scattered from him. So instead of focusing on God, he's focusing on what people are saying and what people are doing. So Saul said, bring a burnt offering and peace offerings here to me. And he offered the burnt offering. Now it happened as soon as he finished presenting the burnt offering that Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him that he might greet him. And Samuel said, what have you done? Samuel was just running late, and he, if Saul had been obedient to God and waited for Samuel, the people would have come back. Saul said, when I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that you did not come within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered at Michmash, then I said, the Philistines will now come down to me at Gilgal, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. So, if we don't have peace then we don't act. If God hasn't told us to do something, we shouldn't do it. Therefore, I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. So God wanted Saul's descendants to be the... the you know, the lineage over Israel. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people, because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Then Samuel arose and went up from Gilgal to Gibeah of Benjamin, and Saul numbered the people present with him, about 600 men. What's very sad to me here is that Saul had the opportunity to say, I'm so sorry for what I've done. Is there a way for me to fix this? And if not, right, what's the most important thing? To have God's blessing over your life. To make sure that whoever you are, whoever's under your spiritual authority is safe. You know. He, his children, his sons, ended up dying. His Three of his sons ended up dying with him in the battle. And of course, he didn't, wouldn't know that at this point, that that was going to happen. But you, whenever you get out of God's protection, hand of protection, you're opening up 
attack not only against you, but the people that are under your spiritual supervision. So if he really was wise, he would have gone to Saul and said, look, I made a mistake. He would have gone to Samuel. Saul would have gone to Samuel and said, I made a mistake. How can I fix this? I'm so sorry. And if I can't fix this, then how can I support whatever God wants me to do? Because again, the question becomes not what's going to make me happy, whether that be temporarily, but the question is, what is going, what is, what does the Lord Jesus, what does God want me to do? And Samuel warned Saul here that he was going to lose the kingdom. And then in 1 Samuel 15, he loses the kingdom and Samuel doesn't ever see him again except when Saul, after Samuel dies, and Saul calls him up from the dead um, in, in a, using a, a divination, which is totally against the things of God. But we have to take the fifth point, the fifth and last point is we have to take God's warning seriously. So if you don't have peace about something, don't act, right? And if God warns you about something, then take it seriously. Like Samuel is saying to Saul, you did foolishly. Saul doesn't, doesn't apologize. Saul doesn't repent. Right? If we've said negative things, spoken death, there's power in uh, there's, the power of life and death is in the tongue, according to Proverbs 18, 21. Right? We need to repent. Whatever the Lord is speaking to you today about seeking what he wants as opposed to what you think is going to make you happy, whatever that may have may be, take it seriously. It's not a joke. Saul lost his kingdom. His children, some of his children died because he didn't take God's warning seriously. And God loves us so much that when he gives a warning, it's not for us, it's not like, oh, we're definitely going to, to die, we're definitely going to have this consequence. He's trying to wake us up so that we'll change, so he can bless us. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 10 says, Therefore you, O son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus you say, if our transgressions and our sins lie upon us, and we pine away in them, how can we then live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Hallelujah. God wants us all to be blessed, but he doesn't lower his standards. That's why, like I was saying, Lord, bless America to bless you the way we need to so you can bless us the way you want to. Because God's not going to bless our mess. He's not going to bless a nation that supports gay marriage, that supports abortion, that supports all kinds of craziness the way he wants to. I mean, he's blessing us a lot. He's allowing us to not be invaded at this point. He's allowing us to be able to function. We still have jobs and we can still go to work. And there's a lot of blessings going on. But it's not the way he wants to. There's too much crime, there's too much perversion, there's just people not following the Lord the way they need to. And we know, if you don't, if you have lots of depression and anxiety, how is that going to go away? A lot of that's going to go away when people turn to the Lord the way that they need to. So that he can bless us the way he wants to. Verse 11 says, say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? I feel the presence of the Spirit of God. So have Christ's dreams for your life. Have Christ's dreams. Ask yourself always the question, not what's going to make me happy. That's not the question. What's going to bring satisfaction to your life, what's going to get you to heaven is the question, answering the question, what does the Lord Jesus want me to do? 
Does he want me to give up? Or does he want me to take full advantage to be a soldier for his kingdom? Hallelujah. And we know the answer. We know the answer. Amen. Now, in order to have Christ's dreams for your life, you have to have Jesus Christ in your life. And to have Jesus Christ in your life, you have to recognize that the only way to God, it's not many paths to God, it's one way path. When one path to God. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Romans 10, 9 says, As if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So we have to say a confession of faith. Hallelujah. And recognize that Jesus, yes, he died on the cross, but God the Father raised him up and he's alive at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. And, of course, we have to repent. We talked about repentance. That's how we finished this message. Acts 17.30, one of the verses where it says, God wants us to repent. Go away from what's bad, go towards what's good. All these negative attitudes, all of this selfish attitudes of what's going to make me happy, and that's what I'm going to do, it's got to stop if you want God to bless you the way he wants to bless you. Amen? And then finally, finally, um, Matthew 24, 13, that, hallelujah, he who endures to the end shall be saved. So we have to stay seeking Christ's dreams for our life, all our life. Not just for a little bit, but all our life. Hallelujah. So having said, shared those scriptures about receiving the Lord Jesus, let's say a special prayer of salvation based on those scriptures and also based on today's message. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Father God. Father God. Repeat after me because it's a confession. You have to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Father God. Father God. Thank you. Thank you. For sending Jesus Christ. For sending Jesus Christ. To die for me. To die for me. And thank you. And thank you. For raising him. From raising him. From the dead. From the dead. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I ask you. I ask you. To be the person. To be the person. Who directs my life. Who directs my life. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. I confess you. I confess you. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. And Father, and Father, forgive me, forgive me for being negative. For being negative. Forgive me, forgive me for focusing, for focusing on what I want. What I want. Bless me, bless me to always ask. To always ask. What do you? What do you want me to do? Want me to do for your way? For your way. That narrow way. The narrow way is the way to life. Is the way to eternal. Life. And to the greatest satisfaction, to the greatest satisfaction I, can ever have. I can ever have. For in your presence, for in your presence and only in your presence, only in your presence is, fullness of joy. Amen. is fullness of joy. Is fullness of joy. Please always keep me, Please always keep me by, your side by your side. And forgive me, and forgive for, me all my mistakes. for all my mistakes. Jesus Christ's name, in Jesus Christ's I name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. So if you need a Bible or if you need prayer, you can contact us via the internet. We have a wonderful Facebook administrator. Hallelujah. For some reason you can't get through, 201-572-6598. Please don't call but text. That's the best way to reach us if for some reason you're not getting through through our Facebook administrator. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We do have English language Bibles and Spanish language Bibles that we can send you for personal use. And we also will be, will be wonderful to hear your testimonies of what you've received through this service. Hallelujah. By, by, by participating in this service, as well as any prayer requests you may have. Now, we're going to prepare for our offering. If the Lord puts on your heart to give to this ministry, 
to help us to continue to advance God's kingdom. Through this ministry of sharing the word of God, we also do have a benevolence ministry where we do outreach to people in need. Hallelujah, in different ways. Um, but I'm not, you know, whether that be helping, and we have an a, a organization we help out with in Honduras, and we also help as needs come up in the community, we do help people out um, as well in, in ways that are very concrete, material. Hallelujah, as well as through prayer and through the sharing of the word. Hallelujah. So we do receive, according to our Facebook instructions and the instructions on our website, AbundantLoveChurch.us, we receive donations through Zelle, Cash App, Check, Money, Order, and Cash. All of the instructions are there. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Reverend Mary now to come and pray for the offering. Oh, hallelujah. And then we will have an offering song and close our service for this week for the glory of God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this offering, Lord. That you bless everyone that gives anything to this ministry. And people that can't give anything, Lord, please, God, touch their hearts so they give their hearts to you. And Lord Jesus, I thank you for this message. I thank you, Lord, because we want to do what you want to do, not what makes us happy to do, Lord. So please, God, we are imperfect beings. Change us and help us be people that you are proud of. And Lord, I want to also say again, bless every veteran that have given their life for this country, the ones that are alive and the ones that are dead. We thank you for them, Lord, so we could live in a free country. And Lord, Bless this service that my husband is going to do today for the veterans. Like I said before, he was a veteran in Vietnam, and he was a paratrooper that jumped out of 13 planes. So, Lord, I claim victory today for everybody that listens to this word, for everybody that goes to the veteran services, Lord, because we have to praise them for what they did. Like you said in your word. If you give, you shall receive. May I send them blessings from heaven and earth. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Amen. In Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So now you can stay here, Reverend Mary. We're going to sing our offering song. Okay. And Lord God, with this song, it's just a prayer for our nations, United States and any other nation of person's nation that is participating in the service as well as for us personally that you keep us close close and closer and closer to you Lord. Amen. for my ever lasting portion and this should be on our website abundantlovechurch.us the words if you have two devices you can follow along stand up in your home hallelujah and sing along with us amen for my everlasting portion, more than friend or life to me, for all, for all eternity, eternity. Bless me to walk close. 
goes to thee. And this is a perfect verse talking about seeking hallelujah what the Lord Jesus wants us to do instead of seeking what makes us happy, quote unquote, for the temporary time, uh, period of time. Not for eat or worldly pleasure. Not for fame, my prayer shall be, gladly will I toil and suffer, only bless me to walk, oh. only bless me to walk, close. participating in this service now and always with the precious blood of Jesus Christ in spirit, soul, and body, us, our loved ones, and our descendants, Father. Oh, hallelujah. We praise you and we thank you for this time in yes, your presence. Yes, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We praise you and we thank you for this time in your word. Yes, in Jesus. Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So from northern New Jersey, Oh, hallelujah. This is Pastor Anthony Menzel from Abundant Love Christian Church. Oh, hallelujah. 
I love you in Jesus Christ's name. And Jesus Christ loves you so much, much more. Have a tremendously blessed day.